All right, we're going to talk about the best and proper OEM way to put a double din radio in your 94 to 2000 Mustang using OEM parts. Now, I'd looked around on YouTube and on Google, looking up forums and seeing the best way to do this. And the things I came across, they weren't exactly what I wanted as far as quality or fit and finish or how well it supports the radio or like the aftermarket pieces you find. They have like really weird proportions through here and here and it sets the radio like way back flat here. It didn't have any of the buttons or it has pressure clips and like the radio bolts to this piece or people would just put a piece of like strip of aluminum or some sort of strap across and there's like no bracing in the back, no bracing on the dash. You, if you push the radio, it might flop around because the, the mount's so cantilever just mounting right here at the front on a piece of strap that's just kind of flapping around. So this is the way I did it. So thing is to get the parts to do this, and this is probably the hardest part to do. It's not even really that hard, but it's just you have to be diligent in getting the, the right pieces you need to install all this properly. All right, this is the section of dash you would need from hopefully a car at the junkyard or you pull it or some other place where you could possibly get these pieces. This basic section and this metal piece. The metal piece holds, that's the OEM radio support, it slides in the back, bolts to the back of the radio. So what I did at the junkyard is I took a basic hacksaw blade. And what you need to do is these locating holes right here are going to be your reference for cutting out this section. So what I did is I cut straight across from here. And then I cut because I didn't know how much of the dash I was going to use. At the junkyard, I cut all the way like down in this area here, and I cut out the whole section. Now, at the junkyard, try to have some junkyard etiquette and not destroy a, a good dash if possible. I found one that was wrecked in the side, and the dash was cracked all on this end. I basically cut from there, and you just, you just saw away all the way down here, whatever you need, to take out that basic section and then this bracket here this like half inch right here how it is in the factory in a factory dash is that the last half inch of it folds up and it's spot welded two spot welds to the dash frame back there uh, they're a little different than this sm95 one it's it's basically it's the same but it's just it, it's slightly up higher you could use a spot weld cutter on a drill i didn't have one when i went out there to do this but luckily I had my chisel and a hammer and it wasn't fun getting it out, but I was able to chisel the spot welds off of that bracket to where I didn't disturb any of the metal on this. So I have enough to where I could put these two bolts in for what I did in this. Well, we'll get to that. So once you get that dash section out, unbolt it there, you know, unbolt this bracket from that, and then you could take that dash section out of the junkyard or at wherever you could find it. Now, removing the original dash section that you need to cut out, this is what I cut out. Now, using these holes as a reference, piece that I cut out, I had left that hole as a reference on the piece I cut out. So I'd be able to match up this distance here from there and there. So what I did on the original dash section is I measured, when it was here, I measured five millimeters down off of this hole and cut the original dash straight across right here on both sides. And then use a Dremel with a cutoff wheel. You get a nice precision cut. I cut directly on this line where the final ends because that's going to be the same across all of the dashes. So you cut that straight down right there on that edge where the vinyl vinyl stops. And I get, went right to this kick out right here, made a little cut across. And then I use a, you could use a straight edge, put it flat against this piece right there. And I made a drawing that went all the way straight down. 
That way I'm not cutting too far into my original dash and I can just make a nice straight cut. Now once you do that, take your hacksaw blade again because on the sides, you see these ribs here? There's ribs that go down. And you won't be able to get really get with a Dremel cutoff wheel in there. So I used the hacksaw blade and that cut that I made there and I went at a 45 degree angle and cut these little supports that go on the side. They're the same between both dashes. So you get a nice cut, the piece that you're putting in and the dash have, will have a nice fit up right there against these pieces. All right, onto the piece that I cut out of the, the later dash. There's a part that goes up here and it has a little bit of a curve to it. So when I cut this piece to fit the dash, you now you could use this as a, as a template to, you know, where you need the fit. You could file any edges down that you need to, to get this to fit nice and square. The piece you put in, I cut just the, the top, like this flat section here, where I measured five millimeters down from this mounting hole. I just cut the, the straight part there and then went straight up. So I'd have this little like curved section that goes right here and then filed it the fit to where it fit flush against this piece here. Another thing to do is on this, the later dash section, the mounting hole there, it's in the same basic spot, but it's on the later dash, it's just a little bit lower. So what I did is I drilled a hole directly above that hole and then filed it down with a file to where it make it make it slotted to where you could move move it up to where it needs to go for everything to line up properly. Another thing is on the back side there's two locating dowels right there and there that match up to the frame of the dash. Now since you have to move it up just slightly, you have to take those locating dowels out so you can cut them off and file them down and just flat because they're not really needed anymore. Once you have your dash piece cut the fit, filed, and trimmed to where you want it to sit properly, it's time to get your glue ready. Now the stuff that's the best stuff to use is this stuff here. It is JB Weld Plastic Weld. It is the best stuff to do any sort of like plastic repair or stuff like this to where you're wanting to bond two pieces of plastic together because it comes in a little syringe like this it's a double syringe tube it's an ab epoxy specifically for plastic before you get the epoxy ready you could take some masking tape and mask right on the edge and down on both sides to where you're gonna spread the epoxy this way you can make a nice clean line so when you spread the epoxy you can pull off the masking tape and it, it won't be globbed over the edge. It'll just be like a nice uniform line going all the way down. Mix up the epoxy, take your spatula and put it on just the, the edge all the way down on both sides on just the dash. Then you grab your piece that you're gonna slide in, slide it in there and then pull it back and then put your one bolt down here so hold this piece while the epoxy is drying to it so you get bolt that in line it up let it sit and then take your epoxy and i went from there and smoothed it all down here and all the way down on both sides the same thing you want this to be nice and flat because it has these rubber pieces that sit on it so you don't want it all globbed up. Once you get all the it done on the front side, put on some gloves, mix up some more epoxy stuff, and then put your hand around a back and put it down the line where you had cut it. That way you can get coverage on the back side and also on those pieces there, those supporting pieces. Pull your masking tape and let the epoxy dry. And then once it's dry, you take your metal piece. Now this piece, like I said, it is, it's kicked up in the back the last half inch. So flatten that section out. 
so this whole piece will just be flat straight and once you get that straight you take this piece you put it in there after it's been flattened bolt it down to where this is even on the top and it'll it'll go past this metal bracket below it and you take a straight edge put it up against this back metal piece have it down like that make a mark that goes across this cross brace and that'll be a spot that you bend it up 90 degrees to where it'll be flat with this piece in the back now when you bend it since it has a, a curve to it it's going to want to like push these side pieces out and kind of like bacon it so when you bend it 90 degrees you're going to have to flatten this section out some to get it to hold its shape properly so it's not all wavy so once you do that fit it back in here again bolt it back in and then you'll have that little spot on both sides and then drill a hole through each one and into this metal frame now i chose to use some just some self-tapping screws it's the easiest i could unbolt it if i need to but now that that's all in epoxy's dried and it looks pretty much oem like it came this way and it is it's solid one of the benefits of doing this is not only do you have the factory mounting locations, all this is triangulated, you have the brace in the back, but also these two holes here are important because those are for the lower spring clamps. Instead of just cutting out like the dash and not putting this piece in here, is this piece is supported by only that one, that one, that one, and that one. So now you have all the proper pieces in. So now that you have this, you could take an OEM one. Some of the aftermarket ones are okay, but I, I, I prefer the OEM one just because it's OEM. And then you could sit. That'll hold the radio in the back. So you could use that there and then right there on your radio. Now, I like to use the factory radio brackets too. Some of the aftermarket ones, they're really flimsy. And this is a, a factory one's a nice solid one and that'll bolt in now the offset for these factory radio brackets sometimes depending on the radio it'll set the radio just a little bit over to one side I had to do this in my 04 is I took these holes here because it has these locating dowels here to where you can't move it back and forth so I basically slotted this hole and this hole just a little bit to where I could gain some side to side. And also on the factory radio brackets, there are these two little detents go onto the factory radio. Now I like to grind these down to where it, it'll fit an aftermarket radio a lot better. So this way, slap it on whatever radio you you're using and you can adjust back and forth where you want the radio depending on where these holes are you could you could drill a hole in this bracket to a corresponding hole in the radio to get it to sit proper depth however you like it a lot of the the aftermarket brackets they sit the radio way in and i don't i don't particularly like it i like it more a little bit out of the dash so it doesn't look so like sunk in there's a bracket there so put in your radio of the choice Take your bezel, and that's just like factory. All right, now for a little bonus here is most of the time when you get double din piece out of the junkyard or used or even wherever you find one, most of the time they're gonna be a charcoal color like this one. Now, in the SN95, they never had charcoal. Most of the panels, especially this upper part of the dash, is black. Now you put a, a charcoal one in black interior, and it just looks off. So if you want to make this black to blend in and make it look all factory, there's a couple ways you could do it. Now obviously you could paint, which is one option. You can get paint from late model restoration, or what you could do is... I experimented with, if it didn't work this way, I was gonna paint it anyways. But these panels, they're actually black underneath the dye that they use, you see the dye there. 
So I took some lacquer thinner, wear some gloves, get a whole bunch of paper towels, soak the paper towels really good, and scrub off all the dye. And it might take a little bit, but you could get all the dye off and it'll leave the factory plastic black. And when you do this, it'll look like you ruined it. It'll look all chalky and streaky. Now, while you're sitting there rubbing it away, you could see where you have taken away the dye and I'll leave it. But when you get done, it will look won't look good. So take it to the sink, scrub it with some hot water, Dawn, and a toothbrush to get whatever residues left off. And, and take something like Armor Oil or any sort of vinyl and plastic protectant. I like using McGuire's Natural Shine. This is my favorite stuff. Let it sit to rehydrate the plastic from when you're scrubbing it with lacquer thinner. That way you can get this nice factory looking black interior piece to match the black for 94 to 98. 99 and those 2000 guys, you don't have to worry about that because most of the dashes of those are charcoal on the top. So that's how I was able to get a factory looking black with this center console piece. All right, I hope that helped you guys because I wanted to provide this video to show you the best way to do this without it being hacked together or, you know, cheap aftermarket pieces or just a strap or just something that was as close to original as possible for the best look and fit. So I hope this helps and good luck with your projects.